What we're going to talk about is staying home forever. Yeah. What exactly? Yeah. What exactly do you think we're going to talk about here? You know, just just getting you getting yourself a, a an iPad or a PlayStation Three or something, and just staying home forever. Is that what we're talking about? Working from home? No, we're talking about when you get old, when you get tired of working, when you can't work anymore. We're talking about staying home forever. As opposed to what? What's the option? Work till you die. Work till you die. Face to face class. That's not an option, Bill. Huh? As opposed to being too old to stay home by yourself. Okay. Okay. So instead of staying home forever, we're put into, depends on our kids and how they treated us, whether or not it's at a mental institute or <laughs> whether it's a retirement home. And how much money do we have? And how much money do we have? Do we, can we afford? And, and that's going to play into what we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. So staying home forever is not for us. It's for our parents and our grandparents. All right? That's what we're talking about. But guess what? One of these days we're going to be there. And this technology is brand new. I went to a CEDIA conference in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, <coughs> through our Convergence Technology Grant. And they had three booths there that talked about home health. The year before, they had none. They had absolutely none. They're predicting, some of the, some of the people we'll talk about are predicting that it'll be 10 times that next year when they have their conference in, in uh, in Denver. My name is Mike Harsh. For those of you that don't know me, I work here at this college. This is my school. This is my classroom. That is my sign. Uh, so I feel, I feel at home. So if I spit in the trash can or something, I'll just ignore it. Okay. We're here as part of a Convergence Technology Grant. Our partners are uh, us, Colin, Con Colin College, El Central, UNT, and that's part of a National Science Foundation grant. I uh, also wanted to give a plug for our DOL grant. We just got a DOL grant from uh, the federal government. It's basically going to be a National Information Security and Geospatial Technology Consortium. It's that. It's basically a three-year, $20 million grant. It's not, it's not for all. You know, my eyes, my eyes lit up when they said $20 million, but they said, no, we don't get it all. Uh, there's six partners. Correct me if, if I'm wrong. There's six, six or seven partners, uh, but we're the leads on that. The goal of this grant is to help retrain unemployed workers to get back into the workforce. Uh, most of you are seeing a lot of unemployed workers, um, but the security and the Geospatial Technology Consortium, basically all that's going to affect us is the, our security and our computer networking. Okay, uh, We're partnering with innovative community colleges from out, all around the nation. We've got, uh, I thought I saw it here, um, Bunker Hill, and we've got uh, Chicago, Illinois. So we've got, we've got several of them from, from across the country. Those are just a few. The objectives today are going to be talk a little bit about home technology and what is it, because uh, we can't really talk about the home health unless we talk about that. We need to understand what a home subsystem is. We need to understand what home technology is, home health technology is, and how does it apply to this particular um, class. We teach a class called Digital Home Technology Integration and basically this is a new component to that. This is, this is new. This is groundbreaking brand new. Who needs home sensors? When we talk about home sensors, what are they? What do they do? I mean every one of us has a home sensor in our house right now. It's called a fire alarm, right? Okay. What does a fire alarm do? Hopefully it notifies us when there's a fire. So we're going to look at some different types of, of sensors, but first we're going to talk about the different subsystems inside the home. We have a home entertainment system, okay? How many of you have a TV connected to a VCR with rabbit ears and that's all you have? Nobody? Nobody? Bill? 
<laughs> well, you raised your hand, Bill. Okay, so what do we have? What do we have? We have a subsystem. That subsystem now is connected to what? Most of us have our home entertainment system connected to our computer network. Why do we connect our TV to our computer network? So we can watch Hulu and we can watch Netflix and, and things like that. <coughs> Voice, video, and data, what would that be? Voice over IP. How many of you have a Ma Bell POTS telephone at home? Nobody, nobody, nobody in this room has. If you have a landline that's connected that you can't pick up, put in your front pocket, it's probably voice over IP. Even if you're getting it from AT&T or Southwestern Bell, they're probably using voice over IP. They're probably going through, what, this thing over here again. What about my home security? Can I, or do I want to, hook my home security system to my computer network? I want to? Yeah, I forgot to set the alarm. Wouldn't it be nice to pull out my iPhone and set the alarm? Or I've got somebody coming over to deliver a couch. I want to unlock it enough for them to go in there and then, then relock it. What about my lighting controls? Turning lights on and off, okay? If I connect all of these different things to this computer network, what does that allow me to do? manage it from the Caribbean or France or anywhere we want to, anywhere we have internet access. Not, by the way, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Was that where we were? We couldn't get internet that one time? That was Phoenix, wasn't it? Okay. So how do we connect all this together? We can go out and buy an SMC. Basically what it is, it's a box that you put somewhere in your house and your telephone lines come in here, your computer lines come in here. This is a computer, this is uh, video, this is telephone lines, alarm systems connected in there. So everything is connected to that one box and that one box is connected to the internet. What is the drawback connecting everything in your house to the internet? If it goes down, everything goes down? What about, what about those hackers over in south of France? It, can they access it? If you can access it on the internet, then they can too. I'm not sure I want hackers accessing, but they're working on ways around that. But basically it gives us remote access to all the systems from anywhere in the world that we have internet. Uh, and you basically bring it all together through home integration, or what we call digital home integration. A look at some of the different ones. You have your home audio, which is what? Define home audio. That would be my stereo. Okay. What else? What about my intercom? My home intercom, things like that. What about home video? This is huge at CDA. Home video is huge at CDA. Probably about eight tenths of the the booths out there were Sony's and Samsungs and things like that in their, their television systems and their home theater systems. So the home theater systems are, are really big. Yes, that's, that's part of it. But well, it's a little bit that and a little bit the home security here. I mean, because the security, the home security has a lot of different aspects to it. But video has to go into the television, right? Uh, it has to be, has to be digitized. And then we talked about the home phone. Anybody not even have a home phone? I don't. I, I've got one phone. I've got a cell phone and that's it. And I don't give that number to anybody. Um, <clears throat> but if I had a home phone, why would I need to connect it to the internet? So I don't have to pay my bail, right? <laughs> okay, home security, what does that consist of? We talked about the security um, cameras. Sensors, like on the windows, if somebody breaks a window or if somebody opens a door. Uh, all the different, all the different alarms, and that's going to become key to what we're we're going to talk about. So your home audio is hooking all your speakers together. A lot of people don't realize that the home audio, which this would be a whole house audio, 
I can have music playing in every room in the house. I can select this room, this room, this room, and not the baby's room. Uh, is completely different than a home theater system. Why is a home theater system different than a uh, audio system? A home theater is usually just one room. It's usually one room. A home theater system. What we were taught the very first day I went to Cedia is you have a room and every room has speakers pointing to one direction and where they meet right there in the middle that's the sweet spot that's where all the sound has to go so if you're watching a movie and somebody runs from left to, to, to right behind you you hear it go from here to here all right but if you're not sitting in that sweet spot it's not necessarily geared to it so these are actually two different things I don't know that I really want this one connected to the internet but I could. I could disable it so the kids wouldn't be using it. Uh, here's your voice over IP phone. Um, we've talked about that. The home video distribution, home theaters. Um, let's talk about the video distribution. How, why would I distribute my video? You can watch different programs in different rooms. AT and T, UVerse, and, and uh, um, DirecTV have finally caught on that. Hey. If I record something in the, in the front room, I want to watch it in the back. What did we do before that? If we wanted to watch a movie, we had to have the VCR connected to that TV. And that's where we had to watch the TV. So what is, what is actually kind of caught everybody's surprise? What is actually replacing video distribution? Media services. Media services. Like, for example, who, Bill? I'm talking about legitimate stuff. Yeah, like like, like, <laughs> like Netflix. <laughs> like Netflix. Direct TV has, has, yeah. Video on demand, any kind of video on demand. I've got to where I think once, twice, even three or four times before I decide I'm gonna go spend $15 on a, on a CD. Because when it comes on uh, UVerse, I just record it on that and keep it there forever. They're trying to stop some of that, but so far they haven't. So I think a lot before I go out and buy a video. Um, home security, physical security, my alarms, my locks, my cameras, my spy cameras, my home network security. If I'm going to connect all this to the network, I've got to secure it. What does this all add up to? If, if we have all this, we've spent a lot of money, right? How many of us have that kind of money? So what we do, what I do, is I do bits and pieces of it. I do have a camera, but it's not connected to the internet. I could connect it to the internet, but I don't have a security alarm. And then I forgot the home lighting. Um, in home and outside the home, why do we light the outside of our home? Security and aesthetics. Because it's pretty, right? Makes the house prettier, but it, it, it also adds security too. Okay, a toilet sensor. <laughs> now we're going to talk about home ale. A toilet sensor. What do I need a toilet sensor for? Overflow. That's a good one. I probably never even thought of that one. But yeah. What about a bedroom door sensor? What would I need that for? Somebody's going in the room or leaving the room. Coffee maker sensor. Maybe a baby. Maybe a baby. I used to have a pool, and my insurance guy said, if you'll put some kind of sensor, some kind of alarm on that back door, it's gonna, we're going to give you credit on your insurance because you've got a swimming pool back there, and if that baby dies, we're going to be paying a lot of money. But if you help us secure that pool, then, then we're going to give you a break on your insurance. Body motion sensors. That's, if everybody got deathly still in this room, these lights would go off. There's a sensor right up there. It looks like a little diamond that you have to move. Every once in a while, you have to move or it shuts off the lights in here. Um, but what, would I, what does this have to do with home health? Save energy. Save energy in the house? Okay. But when we're talking home health. You can tell if an older person's been moving around and how they've been moving and what they've been doing. Not only, not only did they move around, but what if we have a lot of motion in one area? 
or a total lack of motion throughout the whole house, okay? Because here in a few minutes, we're going to talk about why we need that toilet sensor or the bedroom doors. Wireless implants, where are those going to fit in for an old person? Bill? I get one of those right now. My brother-in-law just had a pacemaker installed, brand new technology, and it has wireless capability. If something happens, uh, it's not only providing the, of course, rhythm to the heart, but it's also monitoring the heart in real time. And if anything goes wrong, it immediately connects to the home network. If they don't have a quite town hooked up to a cell network yet, but it can connect up to the home network and alert 911. Through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi. Yeah, they've got them for either one. But yeah, absolutely. Um, grandma can't go to the doctor once a day, but she needs her blood pressure checked every day. What a pain is it to take her to the doctor every day when she could just sit down for 10 minutes and have her blood pressure checked and, and have it wirelessly transmit it to the doctor, tell them everything's okay. So why do we have all this stuff? It's for mom, okay? Why does mom need it? Because she's lived her life. She's not working anymore. She doesn't really want to go anywhere. She still has money. She still has money. Now we can use that money to put her in a home or we can use that home to, and retrofit that home to where, where we can have these toilet sensors. Why do I need a toilet sensor? Well, if mom didn't get up and go to the bathroom in the morning, something's wrong. How do I know if mom went to the, to the bathroom or not? I've got a toilet sensor that says she flushed the toilet. <laughs> now, what's the drawback to that? You got a cantankerous old mom that knows if she doesn't flush that toilet, she's gonna get a phone call from one of the kids, right? <laughs> So I'm not going to flush the, the toilet so, so Bill will finally call me. <laughs> okay, so what is mom doing? Did she get out of bed? Did she go to the bathroom? Did she flush the toilet? Um, absolutely, absolutely. They have, they have motion sensors inside beds that you can put inside beds to where you can tell if somebody got into bed and got out of bed. Did she make coffee? There's a sensor that, that tells that the coffee maker has activated. Uh, did she take a shower? Did she get out of the shower? Did she turn the water off? Did she leave the house? Why do we care if she left the house? Well, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Should mom be going anywhere at 3 o'clock in the morning? Absolutely not. So we can set. We can set these sensors. We can set these sensors to where, okay, if she leaves the house, you know, if the car backs out of the garage between 9 p.m. and 8 p.m. in the morning, something's wrong. We need to somebody. We need to send somebody. Um, did the car leave the garage? Also, we can put cameras in her house that we can access from anywhere in the world. All of this stuff we can get from anywhere in the world. Why would we do that? Who do you call? That's, that's, that's one of the next things that we need to talk about. Who do you call? Do you call him? Well, no, he's not home. So who do you call? Well, there's a lot of people. You can call the next door neighbor. You can call the police. If you're close enough, you can go over there yourself. Um, but that's, that's an issue, too. Do we want every time mom backs the car out of the garage at 901, do we want the police coming to the house? <laughs> no, because they get upset, don't they? All right, so there's a lot of things we can do to keep, keep tabs on mom. Therefore, she doesn't have to go to a home. Why do we send mom to a home? What is our biggest <laughs> asset in <the> revenge? <laughs> I knew that was coming out of you, Jeff. <laughs> Your mom can't take care of herself, okay? So she has to be in a home? Okay. Here in a few minutes, I'm going to say not only is this for mom's house, but also you can put this stuff inside the old folks' home. Yeah, there are companies out there that do that. They monitor, they monitor your parents, you know, where we can't always trust the people at the old folks. They're, they're going to take our check, but they're not next necessarily going to change her clothes or give her a bath. 
Some of the main players in this is uh, basically there's a company that, I'm going to call it the grandfather of it, where it's not really true because the, the systems have been around for a long time. But there's a particular story I'm going to tell you here in a few minutes. Uh, they were one of the starters. Uh, they use a lot of equipment by home controls. Home control sells all kinds of sensors, all kinds of DHTI stuff. The Care Innovations, this is a group that basically takes care of, they'll do, they'll do your mom's home, but they would prefer to do institutions, whole institutions, not just, not just one person. And then your DHTI installers and contractors. What do the contractors get out of it? money, right? Okay. The guy that started uh, Grand Care System, the founder, his name is Charlie Hillman. And I'm going to tell you a story. Charlie Hillman had a, a great aunt that was in her late 80s. She was in fairly good health and she lived down the road. The story says her next door neighbor, but she lived down the road. She didn't want to be a bother to anybody, so one day when her bells just started ringing in her house for no reason, and there was a lot of smoke in her house. She just got up and opened the doors and let the bells ring. After a couple of days, what happened to the bells? The bells stopped, right? The battery went dead on the smoke alarm, okay? But the smoke never did stop. It was continually smoking. So one day she called Charlie and she said, Charlie, it's cold in my house. So he goes over there and he looks and he finds that down in the basement there's a fire. The, the, the furnace was not working properly and smoke was filling the whole house. Now, he feels like he was pretty lucky because it was just a smoky situation, but the fact that she didn't want to be a bother, she just opened up the doors. And this was in January. She almost froze to death. So he decided, you know, we might have to put mom into a home or, or great in into a home, but he knew enough, he was a, some kind of engineer, and he knew enough to know that he could set some sensors to where when the smoke alarm went off in his, her house, he could have the phone, um, have it call her. It didn't really take off until, you know, nobody was interested. Nobody wanted to do that. The technology wasn't there in the late 90s. Uh, and that that was there was extremely expensive. So he kind of put it on back burners and he didn't really get this grand care until I think it was 19, the year 2005 is when they opened. Right now they offer webinars to anybody and everybody for the aging and the professional. The aging mom can go out there and look and say, hey, this is something else I want in my house. Um, Home control, they're basically a major player in DHTI. They offer training on ever-changing sensor technologies. Do sensors change? Yeah. Do we get different kinds of sensors all the time? Yeah. Are there some sensors better than other sensors? Absolutely. So home controls, they're, they're, they're really big in DHTI, but not just DHTI, but also home health. Uh, care innovations, they're for seniors in senior communities. They offer for the whole community. We'll watch the whole community for you or help you monitor your, your, your refrigeration, refrigerator sensors. It's not to see if we got enough beer for the, for the night, Michael. It's, we, gotta, we gotta know, has the refrigerator been open? If the refrigerator doesn't open for two or three days, is there a problem? Not necessarily, it depends on mom. Door semper, sensors. How many of you are afraid mom's going to take her medicine three times in one day because she forgot whether or not she took it? So there's systems in place or there's systems that you can buy to make sure that doesn't happen. Motion sensors, excessive motion in one area or no motion at all. Bed sensors, did the person not go to bed? Did mom fall asleep on the couch? You know, why did mom not go to bed? Uh, did she not get out of bed? Also, we've got uh, blood pressure and glucose meters that will take samples and send the results to your caregivers so you don't have to go to the doctor every day or every week or, or whatever. Other sensors, you have fire, fire flood, which is a doorbell with lights. You know, I've been ringing the doorbell for 45 minutes, Mom, why didn't you, well, I didn't hear the doorbell. 
Uh, same thing with the phone. You can, you can hook up your telephone to where it rings. It'll turn the TV off or um, a bright light or even a loud bell. Strobe. Some kind of strobe or something, you know, just to let, let you know. And you can opt to turn those off at 9 o'clock so nobody can bother after 9 o'clock. Any others that you can think of? Any at all? I was thinking like uh, FIS has perimeter fiber optic systems in it. You know, if they decide to walk out of the house and walk down the street, as soon as they cross that beam, it sends an alarm. That's military use. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, to, to me, you stop and think about it. Has anybody ever owned a driveway monitor? And a, What the heck is that for? Just let you know that somebody's coming in the driveway. See, I've always thought if I drive in the driveway, I already know I'm in the driveway. Who's it going to tell? But you're, you're right. So if I'm already home, so now somebody's example, coming in. My parents live in a rural area, and so it's a long driveway down to the house, and they have to go past the house to get to the barn. Right. Of course, out where they are, tractor theft and that kind of stuff is big. So they have the sensor set up so that they know if somebody comes in, it rings bells in the house so they know to go look and see. It may just be the UPS guy, but it also lets them know that if somebody comes in and it doesn't go off them going out, uh, they know to go check the barn and make sure somebody's not How long there. have they had this technology? Is this new? Uh, no, they've had it for about five years. Yeah, so this, this, the, these sensors have been around for a long time. We're just, you know, a, a toilet sensor. The first time I, a toilet sensor, come on. Why would, I, why would I care? But you stop and think about it. That's, that's something that pretty much has to be done every day. And if the toilet doesn't flush today, there's a problem. So there's a lot. Who benefits from this technology and why? What is that? That's my dad. He's 73 years old. Right now, um, he had a scare a couple of weeks ago. He thought his kidneys were shutting down, so I go rushing down there. He does not want to leave his home. He told me, you will not put me in a home. He said, I will die in my home. If I have kidney failure, I'm not doing dialysis. Just, and that's what he told me just a couple of weeks ago. This is his home. He's, this house that he lives in, has been paid for for 20 years. How would you like to have not had a house payment for 20 years? Absolutely, absolutely. And why would he want to give that up to go live in a little eight by 10 box? So who does it benefit? The old folks, the people that have worked all their life and they deserve something better. What's one of the biggest drawbacks with this? Oh, who else benefits? This is some of my DHTI <coughs> students. That's me teaching DHTI. So contractors, technicians, home controls and other manufacturers off, often offer up to 50% off the sensors. <coughs> if I'm given a 50% discount on my sensors, what do I make profit? 50% on the sensors. Then I charge somebody to install them. So the money's there. The devices are really easy to install. Once you get them installed, you can offer a maintenance agreement. Hey, if something better comes along, we'll sell it to you, come out, hook it up for you. We'll come out once a month, check everything, make sure everything's working. Easy to add and subtract services as they're needed. Well, last week we didn't really care if mom left the house in the middle of the night, but she did last week and we don't want her to do that again, so now we're gonna put the, the driveway sensor in. Uh, drawbacks, no federal regulations. I mean, that's a drawback to, to us. One of the things we teach, Bill, in uh, home technology integration is a fire installer, somebody that installs fire alarms, they're bound by law. If, if, if their alarm fails, who's liable? Who's liable? Well, here, if mom leaves the house and the alarm didn't go off because the cat chewed the wire, who's liable? Mom, mom, that was mom's cat. It's not, it's not the technician. The cost, how much do you think this costs? Depends on what you get. Depends on what you get. If you got it all, it's going to be kind of expensive. Reliability. But let's go back to this cost issue. 
Who are we installing this stuff for? An old person, right? How old are they? It's usually somebody that's probably fixing to go. You know, we're just trying to cushion their last day. Do we really want to spend $20,000, $30,000 retrofitting her house or his house? Do we want to spend that kind of money? Probably not. The kids don't, right? But it's my money. I'm the old person. It's my money, and I want to stay in my house, right? So what's another option that is being kicked around? No, because mom wants to stay in their house. My dad wants to stay in his house. I mean, this, this house has fallen down. Lease it. Lease it. You know, how much? $1,000 a month? $2,000 a month? Depends on what you put in there. $5,000 a month? Does it depend on what mom can afford? Absolutely. And what happens when mom passes? You go in there and get your equipment and you put it in somebody else's house. So that's another business. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, see, I haven't looked at that aspect of it. But I'm sure, I'm sure most of it is I'm probably sure right not going to be covered. And I mean, I'm sure right now it's not, but I'm sure. Sooner or later. Yes, ma'am. I was just saying, uh, I'm reading an article that says that there's supposed to be 10,000 baby boomers retiring every day for the next 20 years. If you think about it, we're going to house all these people with new generations coming up. They're not all going to fit in a retirement home. They're not all going to have retirement uh, living assistance where they have the funds for that. So. And if they're like my dad, look, I've got money in the bank, and until that's gone, you're not putting me in. I mean, he's absolutely adamant, and he's, he's one of the beginning of the baby boomers. He's actually only 72 years old, but he's been retired for 22 years. Well, we have an alternative problem, too. Mom doesn't have the money to go into the retirement home, so how do we take care of her? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So how do I personally stay on top of this technology? <laughs> I've been to Cedia twice in the last two years uh, through, through our grant. I went to a conference here in uh, Dallas. I call it the As Is Conference. I don't think that's what they call it. Uh, the working connections that you have here, the high techs, things like that I go to. Um, Cedia is basically the custom Customer Electronics Device Installer Association, basically according to their website, they're the number one trade show in residential electronic systems industry. Now, I was in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, and there were a lot of people complaining that it's too hard to get to Indianapolis. I think Samsung basically said, we're not going. You know, it cost us an extra $200,000 just to get our stuff there just because we can't get so they decided. This is an email that I thought I'd throw in here from one of the, one of the vendors at As Is. And basically all we need to know is, is basically, hi Mike, thanks for stopping by our booth in Dallas. It was nice to meet you. That was very cool to meet a teacher bettering himself for the sake of his students. Basically what I was trying to do is figure out, you know, how do I stay on top of this? How can I be a home audio expert? How can I be a video expert? How can I be an alarm system expert? A computer networking system expert? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. CDA actually has tons of, tons of certifications and that's basically what got me interested is because we used to teach to the DHTI certification but that's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. We still have a class called DHTI, but the certification is not there anymore. Just yes, a sir. side note, is there a courseware for that? I, CEDIA I has their own courses. Uh, that's one of the things that I've discussed with CEDIA is what can I do? Can I just volunteer and come up here and help you teach classes in order for you to let me have this? But they offer stuff. They offer courseware stuff but it's, it's rather expensive and it's basically per student. So I've kind of shied away from that. I haven't totally blocked it out, 
but I don't see paying per student because it's you know seventy five dollars or something like that per student. So, but that gets them the book, the the class time, the seat time. They don't have one thing that covers all these subsystems. You know, you've got to have this one, then you got to have this one, then you got to have this one, then you got to have this one. It's just like I consider myself to be a a networking person. Ask me about home audio, I can point to the speakers in the on off volume, you know, and I can figure out how to how to hook it up and make it work, but I'm not an expert. I couldn't calibrate a system. Same thing on home home video. Um, who else can benefit from the home health? Cody Lynn Hooper was a student of mine. Um, who is he? Who is he? This is a picture of Cody in his very second class. Cody uh, had taken a computer maintenance class. As a matter of fact, he sat right there in that chair where Jeff's sitting. Uh, and the second class where I actually took this picture was in digital home technology integration. This was his very second class in over 20 something years. This guy's like, like 35, 40 years old now. Um, this is Cody as a technician after he'd been with us for about two years. What you can't see in this picture right here is Cody had real long hair down to the middle of his back. You can't see the tattoos on his arm. His arms are covered in tattoos, uh, completely covered in tattoos. This is him after a couple of years. You can actually see the tattoos peeking out of his arms here, but they're on the inside of his arms too. He's still got long hair, but it's pinned back. And this, this is shortly after he graduated, less than a year after he graduated. So who do we do this for? We do it for our students. We do it for them to graduate um, and benefit them. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or complaints? Yes, sir. On the cost thing there, I would presume that it's a lot cheaper to uh, keep a person at home and monitor uh, electronically if I could than it would be to keep them in a specialist building. Probably for who? For, for anybody. Yeah. yeah. And that's that goes back to what she's saying. The the health industry is starting to see this. As a matter of fact, did, didn't aren't we supposed to have a health somebody do something on health in this yeah uh, th they're talking about something completely different but we've met with them I mean we're converging with the health we're gonna we're gonna have nurses in our in our classroom uh, we're gonna teach them security we're gonna teach them networking we're gonna teach them home technology integration things like that uh, so the health industry has recognized this the insurance company you know well it, it's gonna take them a while to realize that yeah it's probably cheaper to keep mom home not going to the doctor's office every, you know, two days. Because what's an office visit? At least twenty bucks. At least twenty bucks. Your copay is usually twenty bucks. That's that's just what you pay. The insurance is probably paying a hundred, hundred and twenty. How much? How much would they charge to just check an email and say, okay, her her blood pressure was thirty point three. Didn't really have to see her. You got some data input person doing that. So, yeah, the cost is going to be much, much, much cheaper. It can go in automatically. Yeah, it can automatically go in there. As long as all systems are integrated. But when all systems become integrated, they become really hackable. So, you know, that's an issue. Well, and that's that's why we've been talking to nurses, because they're they're aware that's what's fixing to happen and they're not ready for it. They're not ready for it at all. Wireless app, wireless app ads, yeah. contacting and a wireless network in the hospital. Same thing right. prescriptions, they're not writing prescriptions now to the, to the, uh, to the pharmacy. pharmacy. That Absolutely. Thing. Absolutely. It's kind of like our paychecks. We don't see our paychecks anymore. I used to love to go to the bank and cash my check so I could count my money before I had to start giving it away. Yeah. I don't get to do that anymore. <laughs> any, any other questions or comments? This Absolutely. Well, 
Well, it's like, it's like my dad said, I've got money. I've got money that you can use to put me in a home, but you're not going to do it. You're not going to use my money to put me in a home. I worked my whole life to pay off this house. This house is mine. And unless it falls down and I have to crawl out from under the rubble, which he may have to, the roof is falling in. Um, you know, he's not going anywhere. And he just literally told me if it comes down to having a heart attack and laying in the, in the living room and dying. And see, that's my biggest concern with my dad. Everybody, everybody he knows is either dead or moved away. He lives in the ghost town of Andrews, Texas. And, you know, there's nobody left there. He doesn't have a lot of friends there. He's got a girlfriend and he's got a couple of other people that he associates with, but there's nobody that really comes by every day. And you know, he could die on Thursday and nobody find him until the next Wednesday. So that, that bothers me. But he says, I won't care. That's exactly what he said, I won't care. So anything else? Do you have something else? Anybody else? Okay, well, I really want to thank you.